would you love to know what low vibrational energies are? Would you like to know how releasing low vibrational energies can address your physical, spiritual, and mental issues? And how about living a more conscious, loving way of life? These questions are going to be answered in this fantastic interview with the, one of the biggest hearted people I've ever met. His name is Roland Walters. He is a gifted light worker, a light healer, a spiritual counselor, and he's a shamanic practitioner. He shares what it's like to feel energy, how his now deceased daughter, Shayla, is part of his healing work, how he helps people through energy healing, and so much more. You're going to learn so much. And you are truly going to enjoy my interview with this wonderful man. Hi there, and welcome to the Grief and Rebirth podcast. I'm your host, author and trauma survivor, Irene Weinberg, here to encourage you wherever you are in your healing journey. In each episode, I chat with incredible grief and trauma specialists, healers, mediums, and celebs, as well as remarkable people who have inspiring healing stories to share. If you're looking for a podcast that's both uplifting and inspiring, you've found it. Let us help you find your joy in life. Hi, everyone. I hope this finds each of you so very well. I'm speaking to you from my studio in West Orange, New Jersey. And I could not be more delighted to have the pleasure of interviewing Roland Walters, a dedicated and gifted light healer, spiritual counselor, and shamanic practitioner who believes that part of our journey in this life is to learn how to release our deep core wounds and connect to the light within each of us. Roland earned a Bachelor of Science in Animal Science from North Carolina State University in 1990. His life-changing spiritual journey began in 2008 when his baby daughter was on life support. As she lay in the hospital bed, Roland found, felt a dome of energy surrounding her chest like a bubble that prevented him from physically touching her but allowed others to do so. That hospital experience prompted Roland to delve deeper into the meaning of the energy he had experienced and his purpose in relation to it. He began searching for answers by joining a Reiki class, where he eventually met a shaman and decided to embark on a journey of shamanism. During the ensuing years, as Roland continued to expand his understanding of the spirit world, he began offering guidance and support to those seeking inner healing and self-awareness. His life-changing work, which centers on energy healing and spiritual counseling, has helped many to discover a more conscious, loving, and connected way of living. I'm looking forward to asking Roland, will be speaking up to us today from Eflin, North Carolina, about what it was like to feel energy during his childhood. Why the dome of energy that surrounded his infant daughter's chest prevented him from physically touching her, but allowed others to do so. How his daughter Shayla is now a part of his healing work and spirit. His unique approach to light energy healing and more for an interview with a remarkable healer who states that we see things not as they are, but as we are. Hi, Roland. A truly warm welcome to Grief and Rebirth Podcast. Hello, Irene. Very grateful for being here. Thank you. I, I am, so thank you. Yeah, we're going to have, this is going to be a wonderful interview. I think there's so much people are going to enjoy that we're going to be discussing and learn from, which is the whole point of what we're doing here today. So, right. yeah. you know, so let's start from the beginning. What was it like for you to feel energy during your childhood? Were members of your family aware of this natural gift of yours? And how did they react to it? 
I don't know that my siblings had three siblings. I don't know if they did, but I'll, I'll tell you the fact that I grew up on a dairy farm. We were always working and always doing, and it was just, it was like nonstop, you know, especially for my parents. But, you know, it was just one of these things. You, I would get a glimpse of something and, you know, I would say something about it, like to my mom usually, because my dad was always out working and, and she would just be like, uh huh, you know. And then as I got older, it was, it's like I was starting to finish their sentences before them. And I didn't think nothing about it. They would just be sitting or talking at the dinner table and, and having a conversation. And, you know, you get into one of those scenarios where you're like, and you're trying to find the words and I would finish the sentence and they would both look at me like, and I remember one time them saying, do we talk about this once before in front of him? And like, no. And at the same time, I'm going, why did I know that? You know, but the big thing was within kids, it wasn't so much around the family, but other kids, I would feel things or notice things, you know, when I was, let's say, in elementary school and then middle school and stuff. And and it wasn't accepted. It was, you know, I'd say something and like, let's say a group of kids playing together, we're all playing together and doing something. And, and somebody would say something and and it would trigger something with me or a feeling and I'd bring it up. And then all of a sudden everybody was like, OK, back off. And it's like, He's you know, weird. I would lose He's friends. That, yeah, I would lose friends that way. So. But I don't think things are really slow enough as far as the family wise to to take notice, except for the occasional things here and there. And honestly, as I as I as I got older, I would open up for once in a while and then close back down because of somebody's comments or somebody's negative comments or different things. And that happened, you know, four or five times up until I was probably twenty. And I can learn to keep it under wraps pretty good but I didn't really know what I was keeping under wraps. I mean, I can say that now because I know, but it was just, I always felt something just like all this was around me, this energy. And, and I can't say that I was always hearing messages per se, but I was just feeling stuff. Or, or I remember one time uh, shaking this man's hand that my dad introduced me to. And I remember it was just the most uncomfortable feeling it's just like this heaviness and this kind of almost like a sickness feeling. And when, and I was a little kid, let's say eight, nine years old or something. And I shook this man's hand and I jerked back really fast, jerked my hand out of his hand. Cause it just felt so not right. Something wasn't right. And my dad kind of fussed at me. He was like, well, that wasn't very nice. And fortunately I knew what it meant to, you know, when you, you bump your elbow and you, you know, you hit that funny bone and I was like, Oh, you know, I, was, I made some story up about that. And I'm walking away going, what was that? What was that? And it was just stuff, little stuff like that. But I was always, it was more so me trying to hide it than people, you know, cause nobody was, nobody really knew anything. I didn't know anything. There's nobody to talk to about it. Did you ever find out what that dark energy was that you were perceiving from that guy? Was he either sick or or not a good guy or whatever? No, I mean, I, I did not. But if I were you know, just looking back at it or thinking back now, lack of happiness, you know, just you know, frustration, sadness, worry, anything like that is what I would say I would perceive it as been. Back then, I did not. I was just trying to get away from it. Yeah. <laughs> trying to get away from it. So now you would have said, you know, I can help you with that. <laughs> so let me ask you. So you really came into your knowing about the special ability that you had when your infant daughter, Shayla, was on life support. And I'm so sorry about that. And why did, and there was this dome of energy surrounding her chest that prevented you from touching her yet allowed others to do so. Can you talk about that? Talk about Shayla and tell us what that was about. I mean, you sure. literally went to touch her and you could not get down to further down. Yeah. So it's, uh -huh. um, you know, she was between four and five months of age and, uh, she was born with downs, but was a, a fairly normal acting child, just had downs, but she had that leaking heart. She had a couple holes in her heart and it led to, congestive heart failure so she ended up having a heart attack and we were actually in the hospital when she had it but um and it was one of those scenarios where we lost her but they brought her back you know we'd lose her and bring her back and they were a period of 45 minutes so she ended up suffering brain damage and and lived the rest of her life with spastic cerebral palsy but she was little i mean she was still an infant and so um 
while she was in the hospital, she had all, well, she was in PICU, you know, intensive care for pediatrics. Um, she's, <laughs> she's laying there and she's all spread out and all she's wearing is a diaper and she's got all these tubes in her because now they're, they're using machines to pump her heart for her, trying to get the heart to chance to heal. And she was in the hospital for like six weeks in that, in that unit for like six weeks. But anyway, and they got this, you know, lamp over them for keeping her warm. And, you know, the first thing you do when you walk in is, is like, is she warm? You want to touch her. And I just knew in the early part of her life and actually through the rest of her life, it was really hard to regulate her temperature. She would get cold or hot. So anyway, I didn't go up to touch and I go to touch her chest. And, you know, mind you, let's say this is the top of her chest. I go to touch her chest and it's just the meat. I got it right there and it was just like, what is that? I mean, it literally, if I'd closed my eyes, I would have thought I'd touched her chest. And so, you know, it was only three, four inches above her. And mind you, her chest is only, you know, a little bitty thing. So, but yeah, so I was like, I'm rolling around on it. And, you know, stop, look at her and look around. She was looking at me and I'd do it again. And, and then finally I pushed on it and she's completely unconscious. You know, she, they've got her in that comatose type state. So she doesn't move and everything while it goes through helium. But I pushed on it, but did not touch her, and all her limbs jumped. Wow. All her limbs jumped, and I jumped. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm looking around again, and, like, and, I, and I just keep, you know, I can laugh about it now, but then I was just like, oh, my God, what out. is this? What the heck is this? And it literally, it's literally like you take a bowl, and you turn it upside down and put it on her chest. And I'm just like, and I'm smoothing out and rubbing the bowl or something. And so I pushed it again. And she jumped again. It's like, okay, we can't keep doing that. And But I go down to her feet. I could touch her feet. And I go to her hands. I could touch her hands. But I couldn't touch that. Well, that's where her injury was at. And I just at the time, I remember thinking, and, you know, I spent my time there. And then I was going back home to our, to our young son, who was about two at the time. And... um I remember just, you know, walking out of there and walking out of the hospital going, I have no idea what that was, but, but I knew, but I didn't, you know, it's one of these things, you know, it's, it's that energy and you know, it's, it's something there and it happened for a reason. And, you know, when the nurse came in and, and I touched and I was like, can you feel that? And she just looked at me, did a couple of things and left, you know, she yeah. was like, I'm not even going to talk about it not even go there. But just walking out of the hospital, it's just that constant thought i got i got to quit messing around with this i got to do something with this this was like you know feel this hindsight now i know it was all the energy the wounding energy and stuff and a lot of that heaviness need to be pulled out because i often will feel the kind of the pressure over somebody who's dealing with a lot of a lot of weight a lot of emotional weight or physical injury or something and it needs to be pulled and moved but i didn't know that at the time right. and you probably could have helped her at the time knowing what you know now probably you think I would like to think so, yes. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like that really helped you help other people. So now she's she's on the other side. Correct. How old was she when she went to the other side? Ten years old. Ten she years just old. She wow. was a few days after her tenth birthday. So wow. and that was six years ago now. What a struggle. And now she's but but now she's part of your healing work and spirit. And you can see her and communicate with her on a regular basis. So I guess her illness is, feels like it was meant to provide the opening to your soul purpose. Would you agree? And that's what we found out through, you know, found out through like mediums, uh, friends were mediums and um, even clients. Interesting enough, um, I would be working with somebody and, you know, get, I've had numerous clients that were on their early stages of mediumship and stuff. And, 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 uh, they would make comments about who's this little girl walking around here. And then I'd pull out my phone or a picture and show them like, yeah, that's her. And so between them and the connections of other mediums, yeah, we pretty, I got the, got the message that she was here for that time period for this reason. You know, it's for one it was her own experience, you know, her own life experience and her own journey. But we also got, she wasn't coming back again. This was like her, her final round. And so, yeah, it was like to, to open that door to start that process. She, her door closed to open yours in a way. She left open your door. Do, so how does she work with you now? Like if you're working with someone, does she help you to hone in on 
what their issues are or does she accelerate the energy? What is she doing to help you? I believe all of the above. So, uh, and plus one of the things that a lot of people don't think about is I think she also helps to calm the individuals in the room sometimes or on the line if we're doing remote calls. I've had people will say that they feel this presence, you know, a, a young girl presence. And then as soon as they get talking about her, they realize who she is. And it's like she's, she'll be, it's almost like she's helping me work with them by being in with them. It's like, you know, and, and comforting them and, and, you know, helping them open that door up, open that heart up, you know, where that pain may be at. So, but um, sometimes she's just there, just like, my own emotional support, my own little battery backup, maybe. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah, hey, Dad, so. I'm with you. Oh, that's beautiful. Could you describe for us how you help your clients confront and work through their deep emotional pain and why you consider that to be the first step in true healing? My belief is that all of our wounds, whether it's physical, mental, all goes back to emotional. I just, it's, uh, I think if you can take out the emotional, I mean, I, I shouldn't say all the physical because that's not true because you're going to fall and you're going to hurt yourself. You're going to sprain an ankle. You're going to do certain things. But I mean, that kind of stuff that just slowly builds up over time that just, you know, seems like, you know, after 20 years, you just got this constant nagging back or this, you know, constant stomach issues or whatever. That I believe it's, it's emotional. And so through the work and, and what I try to work with people on is this, we get to those Get to that issue, you know, go back as deep as you can into an, an emotional weight, an emotional issue, and basically dig it out. Go to it, confront it, be aware of it. And through through my work, what I'm trying to do is get people to be aware of it. You know, it's like not just aware that it's happened because a lot of most people actually do remember it, but they're not aware how it affects them now, you know, how it's tied back and you know, or even the fact that how much it still upsets them. Do you sometimes have to help them to recall the memory? I mean, is it something that's like if it's something that happened very, very early on in life, you know, before they were remembering things clearly, maybe someone beat them or did something to them or whatever. Do you sometimes need to help them call that call that memory up? Yeah. Majority of the time, it seems like I don't have to. But you know, when you get some of those cases that they feel like something's there, but they really don't have a clue. And they have completely walled it off, completely blocked it off. Like, say stuff like, I really don't remember. Some will say, I don't remember anything unless, you know, beyond age seven or something, you know. And others will say, no, everything was, you know, good at this time. But as soon as we start stirring the energy, then they're like, I forgot about that. It just, it, 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 it's like it pulls it up and brings it up. And, and I used to like to tell them, it's like, this reason why you're actually here. Is because you knew it was there. You just couldn't make yourself dig into it because the pain is still great. You know, whether it be neglect over a period of years or if it was, you know, one time of being physically abused, it's still there. So, yes, to answer your question, sometimes we have to, even though I may not necessarily know it's there, but when I get working with them, on whether it's remotely in person, start stirring the energy, it's like I know something's there because like, it's just extreme heaviness. But then they usually start reacting. And yeah. then that reacting and what, what it is, is getting them, what I mean, reacting is feeling the fear, feeling the, the, the worry, feeling, you know, the, whatever it may be. And then if we can get them to follow that, that pain and whatever it is, will take them to it. Yeah, that's beautiful. And, and, and you're talking about the significance of them becoming aware of what happened to them and looking within. So how does that deep inner healing enable them to see others with more clarity and without judgment does is that part of that whole healing process yes it's um it's a crucial part of not just seeing others but seeing themselves and not judging themselves as well because the way I, i've described to other people is when we're carrying that emotion we're looking through broken glasses we never see clearly you know we we're going off of of you know the feelings or or the judgment or, or or perception or the lies or whatever you want to say that we're telling ourselves. So as we release this stuff, it's like everything starts clearing up. And and whereas maybe before, I'll just use the example of your young yeah. girl. 
you're always afraid of men. If you can get your power back by releasing that fear, what happened to you by one man or one boy, then it opens up the door. It's like, well, not every man's bad. I shouldn't be afraid of every man or I shouldn't hate every woman. You know, it's, it's, it does. It, it's like, it opens your world up. And then you see people, level. you see yourself and you see others and you say, Hey, this happened to me. That doesn't make me a bad person. I was just wounded that way and I need to heal it. And it's, it's just an experience. It is just an experience. But what kills us is holding on to the emotional energy tied to that. I don't want people to forget the experience because that's a lesson that we can use to teach somebody else with, but we can't teach them anything positive if we're holding the pain because we're not seeing clearly. We're not, we're not looking at ourselves clearly. We're either judging ourselves or somebody else. So yes, yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's, to, you know, let's clear our sight and let's, let's see past this and no, not everybody's bad. Right. And I think it also helps when you see people who are very, I, at least this works for me, when I see people now who seem very troubled or they create situations that are really unpleasant, I go, what's unhealed there? I'm not judging them as much as I'm wondering what unfortunately has gone on with them to make them react that way. Would you say that's, that is something that often comes out of the healing that people are not as judgmental, not only of themselves, but of others when they start getting these insights? Oh, absolutely. You know, it goes back to that one word awareness. When we're aware of the stuff we're carrying and then in bio being aware, it's like being aware is the first step of healing because until you're aware there's a wound, you're not going to wrap it up. You know, until you realize you have a cut on your elbow and you just keep working, you're not going to stop until you address it. And it's the same thing. So, and in our mind, you know, we're somewhat taught that, oh, that's not a problem. You just, you know, yeah, you were, you were picked on as a kid. So what? Uh, get over it. Toughen up. You no, know, that's still a bleeding wound. So it does. It, you know, once that awareness is like, no, and you get them in your, their head and, you know, we get thinking, it's like, no, that is a problem because I can still feel the anger to those other kids. And it's like that awareness, then all of a sudden everything starts clicking. And from that, it's like, all right, do you want this? No, I don't want this. I didn't want it then. So it does, it changes. And when you release it, now you're feeling free and that changes the whole equation, right? So I want you to please explain your unique approach to light energy healing. And please teach us all what are low vibrational energies and why it's important to release these low vibrational energies to address physical, spiritual, and mental illness. Wow, that's a lot of healing that you do, Roland. So please explain <laughs> that to us. <laughs> so the light energy healing, a lot, of, a lot of people can look at it in different ways and speak of it in different ways. But Irene, everybody has that light within. We all have that spark of divine, every single one of us. And you have the same thing I do. Therefore, you are equal to me. I'm equal to anybody else, anybody that comes to see me. But it's generally buried. So it's literally the light and energy healing is part of it is, is tapping into what's already there that we all have access to, but even more so tapping into yours and getting you to see your light or getting you know, that client to see their light within. And it's like, you know, all right, let's dig. Like dig past the pains and all the darkness and, you know, and let that light go through. And it's, that's the light healing because we do our healing. You know, we do it ourselves. I'm just, I'm just a tool. I'm just a, something to, to assist you, you know? I would say you're the guide. There you're, you go, the guide. That's, you're the guide to help them find themselves. So the light energy healing is, is, it is that light we all have. So we just got to be aware of, and we got to tap into, and it's yet yeah, you know we can we can bring in more energy and bring in more light and you know or or as it's given to us, but really we have it here, so it's working with that light, you know, bringing out that light and seeing that light, and then letting a person release it so they can heal. What was your other questions? I yeah, apologize. I want you to explain. No, no problem. I want you to explain these low vibrational energies because I hear about this all the time. It's where we don't live in this nirvana where everything is wonderful. There's funky stuff going on here and there's funky stuff going on there. So can you explain to us what these low vibrational energies are 
and how releasing them, which you obviously help people to do, addresses not only physical issues, but spiritual and mental issues also. I mean, there are people listening to this podcast, Roland, who have issues or they had no people who have issues. So, and maybe it has to do with that they're carrying some of these low vibrational energies that they're not even aware of. Yes. Um, low vibrational energies, still another way of saying it, just low vibrational emotional energies um, that are within the people. But there's also those that we project out there. And, you know, there's even those that, um, that people come to me that they've, they picked up from other places. That's not even has a thing to do with them. And can you give an example of a low vibrational energy? That sure. You um, pick up? Sure. You know, one of the terms that people may use is like lost souls, you know, the souls that don't cross over. And most of them, the reason why they don't cross over because they were carrying some emotional burden themselves. You know, they're either worried about this, you know, let's say the mother that wouldn't cross over because she's, you know, fearful for her kids or, you know, anything like that. And what I've seen at times with people, when an individual who's come to me, who's been carrying a lot of their own pains for quite a while, let's say back from childhood even, and, but they can't seem to get over. They, they go over and do all these other energies and they do, you know, they learn Reiki and they learn all these things where they're trying to help heal themselves and I commend them, but they said, I just can't get rid of this. And sometimes it's just because you got a hitchhiker. You got a you got a friend who resonates with your sadness. You know, it's not really a friend, you know, and, and they're not this hitchhiker is not necessarily, you know, a bad evil thing. It's just wounded and it's and it's like you, it's uncomfortable and and what ends up happening. I tell people, I said, a lot of times when we hold on to that stuff, it acts like a magnet and it attracts all kinds of stuff. Sometimes it attracts, you know, people that are alive that are also angry, you know, or also depressed or you know but sometimes it's the other stuff that's out there i also believe there's energies floating around that's literally just projected hate and projected fear that's i think accumulates in areas and people will pick that up so sometimes it's it's those you know attachments those beings or entities or whatever you want to say and don't and don't look at them as you know evil or anything like that they just are. It's just energy. And so I try to first work with people, basically set the individual side and then work on the attachment. And I treat the attachment like they're equal and then move it away. And then now we can do work with the person. So, so someone yeah, who's do- feeling anger and fear and depression and all of that can attract more of that low vibrational energy to them so it's like really a slog to get out of it and heal it unless they get some help from someone like you who can help them banish vanquish (laughs) (laughs) sometimes yeah and it's it was interesting and part of my growth in this field it's funny how it you know i was taking the shamanic classes and all of a sudden i started having these people reach out to me about doing clearing so everybody said it calls it clearings and at first I thought, okay, this is pretty cool. And after a while, you know, for quite a while, I was constantly getting them. And then it was like, wait a minute, why? You know, especially when somebody comes back to me two or three months later to do it again. And then again, it's like, finally, I was just getting like, spirit was going, why? You need to figure out, you know, why. They knew why. I just didn't know why. And then it realized, it finally hit me. It's like, I don't know, a handful of more years ago, it finally hit me. It's like, oh, because you're attracting them with your own baggage. So, but, you know, those low vibrational energies are, they can really be anything. I also come across people who pick up items from places or people who also were not in a good place. And then they bring in that kind of energy into their place just through an item. And that can be an issue. So it's, it's all kinds of areas. Oh, wow. That's so interesting. And I also want to ask you, um, you also talk about, the awakened spirit, the unlimited potential of the awakened spirit, and singing my song. Why does having? How do you get to a healthier soul to a healthier life? And I'd be lying to you if I didn't say I was working. I'm still working on it too, and I will probably the rest of my life. But that awakened. What I mean by the awakened spirit, we often live 
and a false reality because you know we we have this belief that you know things like we're not good enough or or I can never do that or different things and and yeah it's true there's there's aspects of you that you know I may not be ever like a professional soccer player because I may not have that physical agility but I could be a good one if I get rid of my doubts and everything else. In other words, it starts opening up the doors and doing things. So the awakened spirit, I believe, is is just you that is just hidden because of the fears. You know, where did the fear start with? Was it from another time, another life existence, or was it when you were four years old, you know, four through life. ten? So when we take these things off, what I like to see people is they start seeing that light. They start feeling they're brighter. But what's more important is not the light they're looking for to come out here. It's here. It's like they feel everything else. In other words, I've had clients that I've worked with, many clients I've worked with, and they would reach back to me. And it's like, everything's brighter. Why is everything brighter? You know, why is, why is all the colors brighter? And I said, because you've taken off that damp layer and this is more what it is, you know, and why does everything feel lighter? Why? And said, so, because you quit carrying that heavy weight jacket, you know, it's, it's in your light shining. And then when your light shines, everything around it shines. And your right. shine goes to other people also. Exactly. And this right. is not just for you. It's for you and everybody you come in contact with. Even if you never touch them or talk to them or anything, just walk by them and they'll pick up some of it. That's so true. You know, I would, I love some of your stories. So I'd love for you to share a couple of your stories with people. I know you have a client who was stuck until this illuminating image presented itself to you. So, and it, I guess you had to go to a core wounding in this person's childhood. So can you tell us that story? And I know that was a catalyst for a big change in your spiritual work. So let's start with that story and then i would like to ask you about another one that sure yeah that one was i was in a remote session so i was actually in my space um you know wearing a headset and i was listening to the client and um, you're on zoom with her you were on zoom no actually when i do when i do my client calls i don't do zoom because um i do just phone calls because when i tried zoom i found people were too distracted they were looking at watching me versus paying attention what they're feeling so oh, I, I take that out of the out of the picture oh, now. Interesting. So no, it's just on a phone call. So I usually will just sit with my close my eyes and and I'm feeling their energy. And this particular client was talking about something that happened about ten years previous to that, and how they were upset and and anyway, and they were talking and and Irene, what I usually am doing is. In a remote session, I, I, a lot of times I, I envision they're laying in front of me. And it's like I bring their energetic body over and I can start feeling the energy and I'll find it on the part of the body that I where it's being held. And with this person, I get to it and nothing's moving. You know, I know it's in that certain area of the body, in that one chakra area of the body. And the more they talk about it, the more angry they were getting i could feel it getting stronger but it was not going to move it was not happening and i started realizing my client was more into the story than the feeling and and this just wasn't moving and i kept trying to move it and i and at that same time i'm trying to encourage her to change direction and it's not happening and honestly then i started getting in my head this is probably i don't know five years ago or something i was getting in my head and started doubting. It's like, what am I messing up? What am I missing? You know, this should be moving. Why is this not moving? <laughs> and so I'm sitting there with my eyes closed. And while I've got my eyes closed, all of a sudden, this grayish, smoky little cloud, it looks like it's well, like a small TV type size, appears right in front of me. And, you know, we were just talking about this heavy energy. So that kind of made Wait, me jump So this back. is happening while this client is yakking about her story, she, right? <laughs> she, she's just talking right along. But I will tell you, Irene, as soon as this little cloud appeared, I heard nothing. I could not hear her at all. I actually didn't know, if, you know, in this, and I'll finish the story, but I didn't know in that time period of when all this was happening is if she had hung up on me or what. But, yeah, it went silent. 
But yeah, she was just talking right along. But anyway, this little smoky cloud, it's just kind of sitting there right in front of me. And I kind of uh, kept my eyes closed because I didn't want to lose the image out. But I slid my chair back and I was just watching it. And then all of a sudden, this lady's arm appears right, what looks like a lady's right arm appears beside me from about the elbow elbow down. And it just pauses for a couple of seconds, no more than like two seconds. Then all of a sudden, it rushes right into the center of that cloud and grabs something. Because you can, you know, you see when somebody grabs something, it, how the tendons and everything tents up and it pulls it out. And you see, and it's in the hand. There's this pitch black, like large marble in the hand. And I'm just watching it. And it's like, all right, what is, what is this? And the hand squeezes that marble really tight. And it's just like, it, it turns into dust. It goes poof. And the dust just settles. I can see it settling to the floor. And I'm watching, you know, the hand. I'm watching the dust settle to the floor. And I, I glance back up and I see the, the uh, little smoke, black smoke, gray smoke thing start to fall apart and settle down. And just as all this is happening, only in my right ear, I hear, go to the core, go to the core. And then all of it disappeared. And then the lady I was working with was right back in my ear. Wow. She was, I just like, you know, just talk around long. And I'm sitting there and, and I, by this time I've opened my eyes. I'm sitting there and it's like, okay. And I'm always, always take notes on my clients. So I, I was like, I jotted this stuff down right quick and I'm still not listening to her. And she's just talking, talking, talking. And then it's all, then it hit me. It's like, Oh, I know what I got to do. And I guess it was just, you know, that knowing that comes to all of us. It's like, Oh, I got to know what I got to do. So I stopped her. And I have to admit, I think it really upset her when I stopped her and said, this is not working. This is not it. You know, she was into her story. That's, that was her whole thing about. Yeah. Her she was story. into her story. You know, Irene, what I ended up saying to her was, I was, I apologize, you know, but it's like, this is not it. And she was, you know, she's like, no, this is what I, you know, wanted to do. And, and I said, stop, stop, stop. Let's, let's go back to your childhood. And I've never worked with her on her childhood before. And I said, let's go to your childhood. What happened back then? What's going on back then? And all of a sudden the floodgates of tears just started. It just, I could hear, I couldn't see her, but I could hear it. And she's kind of, you know, got the heaving going on. And I didn't have to say another word. She just jumped right into it. And that was, that was it. And, and when I went back to feeling her energy, all of a sudden it started moving, you know? So a lot of what I do in the sessions is I'm helping to assist kind of moving that energy and, or, and, or I'm just simply stirring it up so they feel it more so they can get more into it. But, and then from that point, I mean, it was just like, okay, go to the core issues because we can spend our lives on these, the current layer, you know, whether it was 10 years ago or two years ago or two months ago, we can work on these current layers, but the true pain goes way back. If we knock out that pain or that fear, all those other layers start falling apart. Wow. Yeah. I can so relate to that. Really? It did, and it did change my work a lot. It was just one of those layers of, of, it's almost like I was getting validation. You're going the right direction, but you need to do this. So I was like, okay, let's go that way. And then it I was, just literally switched. It was getting you to go on an even deeper level, it sounds yeah. like. Right? So as a light energy worker, you're guiding people in uncovering the why behind their repressed emotional wounds, which obviously happened to this lady, and which can originate in childhood or be generational, imprinted on a soul level, or can be from previous lives. So you have another inspiring transformative story along those lines with your client named Jan. Can you share, please? Yeah, that was maybe three years ago now. Um, no, maybe maybe about two, two years ago. But anyway, yeah, it's just, this is this lady, who's, she's bubbly, uh, really getting into the- reason the... I'm asking about this story, Roland, is because I think there are people listening to us who are really going to relate to Jan's story. Okay. So, yeah, it's- a smiley, bubbly, laughing lady come in, uh, was excited about getting into the spiritual stuff now. You know, she'd been taking some classes and experiencing stuff and listened to tons of podcasts and, and, um, different things. And, and, but she came to me for this heavy energy stuff was around her. Like people were saying she needed to clear off and stuff. And just, so that was the step was like, let's remove this energy. And, 
And um, part of the time when I see people, and this is in person, so part of the time when I see people, see people, uh, sometimes we never get out of the chairs. Sometimes I get them on the table. I got her on the table, and as soon as I got moving the energy with that first session, mind you, we end up doing four sessions with her. Um, that first session, I could feel this heavy energy. And essentially what it happened was this was, this is one of those buried, buried emotional things. In that particular session, I was stirring up something that she completely had blocked. Um, she wasn't aware of it. She wasn't conscious of it. Well, what it turned out to be was, in theory, not really conscious, but what was what it turned out to be was she would have these glimpses of an image and she always I think she if I'm not mistaken I think she used to say stuff like she thought maybe she just kind of saw it in a movie or something it was something she just picked up from somewhere else but it had nothing to do with her it's just like why would I think of that you know this little quick image well the more I stirred it and and the more the image opened up a little bit and but the thing is that first time it was became so shocking because you know it was more coming up that she would open up a little bit and then slam it shut, like slam the door shut while we're there. And she'd calm down and start working again. And she'd open up and it'd be the same scenes and she just shut it off. And that was actually headway. I mean, we worked for, you know, it was other parts of the, of, of moving energies and balancing this off. But, you know, a couple hour session, she would open up, and close off, open up, and close off. And, and, what it turned out to be is we just we had to stop because she needed a process. It's like this door opened that she wasn't ready to walk through, but was being made aware of. You know, you can't yell like, it unless oh, you're unless you're, so, you can't yell it unless you're aware of it. Exactly. So what she ended up doing, I found out she uh, and we had another session, but before the next session, I found out that she started checking the story, so to speak. And um, for like, part of it was, one of the things she told me she did, and she brought out a, a picture of it where like, she was seven years old, so maybe second grade or something, where she cut all her hair off and she started remembering why she cut her hair off. She said, her, you know, her parents, her mom was so mad at her and she just did this ready to cut. This was a sexual abuse situation. Ah. So she was cut. She had cut her hair. She remembered now why she cut her hair off because it was not to be attracted, attracted. to that that abuser. And then she started having ended up having to get a surgery because she was refusing to go to the bathroom because it was in that person's house where they played around in the summertime. Wow! So it was it was all these things. All these things were validating, and and it was like. It's like she was really, I guess, validating, you know, what was coming up, you know, in in the process. So she had this mask of bubbly, lovely, wonderful that was hiding this tremendous pain. Well, you know, she did. And she, you know, she even talked about when in the first session, she talked a lot about how she looked for answers through the church and um, how she didn't feel things like not feeling protected and, you know, about them not being in a happy marriage, being in an abusive marriage and different things. But she still kept this bubble out, you know. And one of the key things with her was always loving everybody, everybody else, but not her, having nothing for her. And so when after she pieced this, these things together, when she came back, she was like, now it turned out she's blaming herself. She was going in these layers is what was happening. She was, you know, after she realized it all, then she started blaming herself for putting herself in that position. And it linked herself into every other position wow. in her life where she blamed herself by because I was in this position. And it's like, no, but she had trained her mind that that's what she was. She was doing it. It was her fault for all this stuff. So we literally worked in the next session of working on that energy, releasing that energy of that self-blame, you know, and, and pulling that through. That went well. That went really well. But then it was the processing again after it. This is as important for the processing after the session that it is anything in the session because you got to go back and just go back and you know, what was this, you know? And so you know, I want to stop your mind you. Going, I want to stop you. So that's really a part of your healing is not only do you pull out the energy, but then you help them to process what happened to them and to move and to start to move past it, right? Um, it's so like a package. Some at the end of the sessions, a lot of times I talk to them about the processing, you know, and, and paying attention to the body and don't just 
push it on a shelf somewhere and go into life again. I said, you need to sit with this. You need to take time by yourself. You need to, you know, this is not. And and then when I'm digging into the body with energy, it's like a spiritual surgery. So, and then I do tell people, I said, let me know how you're doing in a couple of days. Where are you sitting at? What, you know, what are you experiencing? And for like this individual, if they really get stuck, yeah, call me. You know, we may not talk for a long time, but maybe I can just kind of tweak you back into stop looking this way, look back this way. No, we weren't doing that. We were doing this. Remember this. So I too try to help them get into that processing, that mental reprogramming, because that's a lot of it. And this this was a major part part with her is reprogramming. And but after the second session, I was say with this with Jan, she got like angry. She was just mad at everything. She was mad at me. She was reaching out to me, really like hating me and wondering if I was doing something bad to her. But what it was, it was anger for having to go through all that. Anger for for having to, what was it she said? She put up her own, I don't remember the term, but basically she put up her own tools to protect her and to block all this stuff. It was your fault that you brought it up for her to finally look at it and feel it. Yeah, and so, and I've had people, other people do that too, is they get angry because I brought this up, and like what we often do when we're hurt, we lash out at somebody else. And so, I don't blame her, that's what she was doing, I just kind of let her go through the process, and, but she finally came to the awareness that I'm just mad because I'm in this position. I've given so much to so many people for so many years, and I've been mistreated and things like that, and, and I always put the... I've always, and then so many people pointed at me that I've been pointing at me too, and it made it easier for other people to point. So the next time she came back, I said, it's time to truly address the event, the actual wounding. So what I end up doing with somebody on that, that if they, if they're ready to get to that point is let's relive it. Wow. It doesn't always work for some people. Some people have to go a different direction, but it was time with her and it was is to go back there. Be, I don't mean be the intelligent, like Irene, you can't go into it being the intelligent woman you are now that this a podcast or all this. You got to be that seven year old or that four year old. I can relate to that because I had a similar incident happen to me. So it's you, it's going there and it's, it's for some people, it's addressing them, the person or people whether it be one time or a hundred times over five years of whatever it may be. Some, for some people it's verbally spitting, you know, chewing them out, fussing them out as if the person's here and, and allowing that person, the, the client to take the power back. For some people it's just seeing it as once again, it's that awareness, like, you know, and in their mind, they're cussing this person out and they're, you know, they're going like, Oh, it was that. I wasn't just dreaming this. You actually did this. You know, how could you and things. So for her, for Jan, it was in stages. But what ended up happening by the time we, you know, got into this later sessions, she started, it was like, <laughs> by the time the last session, she was a different person. She bumped out of there. The, I'll tell you, um, Irene, the, the first session she left, I was worried about her because she was, she closed down so tight. She literally was like this walking out. Whereas a lot of people are open, you know, and just kind of like floating. But, and I was worried about her. So when she reached out to me, I was like, okay, good. I know how you, what's going on with her. By the last session, she was receiving messages. Her wow. guides were talking to her. She was, she was spitting stuff out. And, oh my. and then for like the next couple of months, she sends me a message once in a while going, I'm getting this, I'm getting that. I'm like, great. You know, but it was, it was just, you know, it's one of those things of, not looking outside for everything, not looking for the church, not relying on the husband, not relying on everybody else and not trying to put everybody else on a pedestal because you're all standing on the same pedestal. But you kind of helped her set herself free. And, but thing is, I commend her. I commend everybody I work with because they have to take that choice. They have to take that step. And it was, I, I tell you this story because it was hard steps. I've had several people have come and we can knock out one thing in one session and they're good and they may come back six months later for another one. But this one, for the, it was so blocked and so painful. It took four different sessions 
But I commend her because even though she was angry at me, even though she was extremely puzzled and hurt and, you know, fearful, all this stuff was coming up, she kept coming back. And she's like, you know, it's like, no, there's something more. You know, she trusted her own self and knew I can't, and basically saying, I can't keep doing this. So I'd like to take full credit, but really, until they make that decision and like she did, and then all of a sudden everything just, it was, yeah, it was wonderful. Unfold. Well, it takes a lot of courage to heal. It really does, but it's worth it at the end, you know? So now that we've talked about that, let's tell everyone about your individual sessions, your group sessions, your signature group event called the Energy Cascade of Healing Light, and anything else you'd like to share okay. with our Breathe from Rebirth podcast audience. I do individual sessions there. I'll do a remote and in-person. Um, if people can come to me, that's great. A majority of my people, I do it remotely. For all, I'm very fortunate that through word of mouth, I've been able to expand on in other, several different other countries. But with most people that come to me, you know, a lot of people speak about pains or physical pains and different things or other health issues. And I do work with people on smoothing out energies to help the body do some physical healing. But I'll, the majority of the time, I take people back to what is it they're carrying that, that is being that block. And and majority of my work is emotional. So I do take people back to core woundings like we were kind of talking about earlier. Not kind of, that's exactly what I do is take people back to core woundings because generally it's whatever the emotional is, sometimes the core woundings can be generational where you've carried it from family members. But basically in my individual sessions with people, I'm trying to get them to go back to that hidden truth of why they're actually sick or why this is going on. And I have people reach out to me, and I know after this podcast, I'll do it, you know, it'll happen again. I have people reach out to me that are going through some major sickness, you know, like a cancer or something now, and and wonder if, you know, they'll. I've had people ask me, can you heal that? And I said, you know, sometimes maybe you're on this journey and you're supposed to go through that. But I still tell people I can help you to see clearly of that process. I can help you to get out of this part by getting rid of the emotional weight that may put you into the cancer, maybe or may not. But if we get rid of that emotional wounding, that core wounding, a lot of times we can look at the scenario with much more peace and then the body actually works better on the healing. Yeah. So, but yeah, the individual sessions, it, it really goes back into what's holding you back. What's that block? What's, what's that wounding? Cause it's just my belief. That's what gets all of us. That's the bottom line. Everything from people arguing about world issues to whatever is, you know, what fear are we walking around in? What are we spreading? What are we projecting? If we can just open up the light of each person, that's my ultimate goal is to, to crack open. And so each person, so they can see that light within but at the same time, see like your light, Irene, and see the other person's light and go, oh, yeah, we're the same, you know, and right. then feel that connection, feel the energy. The the group events, Energy Cascade, it's um, that's an event that I was doing a you know, like a psychic fair in Raleigh, North Carolina, a handful of years ago, like six years ago. And I was I signed up for to do a talk. And I don't like doing talks in front of groups, so so to speak. So I remember You're doing great with your talk in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> well, one on one, I'm pretty good, but you know, with a group, I mean, I can do it. It just is not. I'm not very. I don't flow very well. But and I remember it's like the day before I was supposed to do that. I'm I'm literally like talking to my guides and stuff, and said, I you know I need an idea. I need something here. You know what am I going to do? And then it's just like within moments they gave it to me. So what it's developed into is a group event of people that I put. So instead of just a healing circle, but it's that kind of concept concept where group of people are close together and I do it over a two hour period where it's actually a healing event, but more importantly, it's an awareness and connection event. It's awareness that we're connected to everything. We're connected to everybody. We're, you know, we're one with everything. And also going back to that goal of being able to get the person to see the light within. When I mean, when we get together in people, when groups of people to get together, if we're angry people, we lower the vibration. If we're people looking 
like generally come to my groups or are looking for healing and want to expand, the vibration rises. So in this energy cascade events, all I ask people to do is just be, just sit still and be. Now, what I do is I'm constantly working either the outside of the group or the inside of the group. And um, basically, I'm looking for energies that aren't moving, you know, within them, you know. But it's one of these things, it's a very simple concept, but it gets very in depth. But we just, we get depth deep into each round that I do in that. And we're just sitting, we're just being, well, I'm not, but the group is just sitting and just being. And as I'm moving the energies on the outside or the inside of the circle, everybody's feeling everybody else and the vibration is rising. So between, I do four or five rounds in a couple hours and each one on my, uh, uh, in between each round, we, we talk about it, you know, what's, what's going on? What's everybody? You call it the cascade of healing light, right? So you're surrounding them with all this healing energy. And it's, you know, of course, at the same time, you know, we got their guys coming in. We got other spirits, and, and in some places, it starts getting kind of packed. It's, and so, for some of those people who are very see a lot of spirits and stuff, they'll start pointing out, like, "Oh my God, it's getting really full in here." And it's like, "Well, good, just soak it up, you know, just go with it." But what ends happening is with each round, people start opening up more. Some people release emotionally. Some people let go of physical stuff. Others just start seeing and feeling and start seeing the light in others and it's just what i end up hearing every single time as people talk about each round they start feeling lighter they start feeling floater and and the energy is getting stronger and everything is is getting stronger and and i said you know they also refer to it as you know outside energies are getting stronger it's like no it's y'all or you're coming together as one and it's magnifying each round is magnifying and magnifying and it gets to a point where now it's sending it out everywhere else. And all we're doing is sitting and being, you know, that's, that's all they're beautiful. doing. And so that's an event I've been doing for quite a while and, and, um, in different places, but. So you travel to do these events, Roland? I am. That's one of these that, uh, I am trying to expand on that. That's I've done a lot with the individual sessions and I, I keep getting, I keep getting, I got to get out. For the groups, I got to get out for the groups. I got to reach more people that way. And, you know, we're in a time, we've probably always been in a time where we need to be paying attention that we're equal. You know, there, there, there's no separation between us, you know, and I guess, you know, we're with technology today and all the news and stuff, it's easy to see it even more, but it's probably always been that way. But part of it is getting people together and we just, sit in this moment where you release stuff and and don't judge and just feel it and let it happen and then we can project it out but yeah it's it's a life is a vibratory experience and that's what we're doing with that it's it's opening up so in the end of those sessions for some people it's just having a chance to feel light to let go of everything you know and and for others it's they're getting messages. It's like it clears the way so they can get stuff in. Some people will come in there and just cry their eyes out. And it just, it all depends. On what they need and they get what they need, depending on what it is. That's lovely. And maybe someone listening here will want to have you do a an energy cascade of healing light for a group of theirs or whatever. So tell me, I know you have a special, we will be giving all these links for your services and all in the show notes and all. Do you have a special offer today for the members of our audience? Uh, yes. If anybody that reached out to me mentions that you saw saw me on Irene's podcast, all for individual sessions will be 20% off. That's great. Just let and me know. And those sessions are two hours, your individual sessions? They're, uh, yes. For the doing the heavy emotional work, it's two hours. That's correct. And you of all people, what is your message about the importance of healing that you'd like to share? With our listeners, why should they go through all this trouble to unearth their stuff? We need to keep healing. You know, we spoke about this before earlier in, in this, but by we have to keep healing, you know, because we're always going to go through wounds of some sort. And through healing, we become aware. Through healing, we we see ourselves more clearly. And through seeing ourselves more clearly, through that awareness, seeing ourselves more clearly, we're less apt to judge ourselves. You know, we're less apt to to think we're not worthy in different things. But at the same time, we can see the people across the way and we don't judge them. 
And it's healing is more than just the physical. It's it's the mental. And when we're when we're in that mental state, you know, I think most people have heard it. You know, a lot of times our own negative thoughts cause our health. But why do you have the negative thoughts? You know, it's really it seems easy to go, well, just change your thoughts. But what's feeding those thoughts? You know, what's the pain? So when we go through these healings, that awareness, we open it up and we start seeing the world differently. Just like the story with Jan, she was seeing, you know, the colors and everything else differently. It's it's um yeah. We can Beautiful just quit thing. judging. Yeah. You're speaking to the choir because I've experienced this myself. And what is the Roman Walters tip for finding joy in life? Well, actually still on that line, it's still <laughs> <laughs> never stop healing. Um because you know, when you let go of something, it feels so damn good. And it puts you in a different place to see things differently, but even more so understanding other people. And then when we understand other people, or even let's just say we feel better, so we listen to somebody's story, they feel better, and then we feel better. So it's the joy is with all of us is in, you know, sharing it with others. But, you know, when we just feel so good when we let go of something, you know, yeah. and then we go, why in the heck was I carrying that for all this time? Yeah. And let me just, tell everyone else I know that they should let go of their stuff too because they'll feel good too, right? <laughs> it is it is a hard journey. And Irene, I tell people when it comes to individual sessions, if somebody reaches out to me beforehand, I'll tell them, I said, be prepared. You're going to work harder than me because this is this has been your your burden, that, you know, that you were never meant to carry. But yeah, but afterwards. Freedom. Yeah. It's great. You know, Roland, in closing, first of all, I want to comment between you and me. You're such a loving, big-hearted soul. Well, such thank a, you. I That's can really nice feel area. that. It's so nice. And I want to thank you for your amazing dedication to helping people release these deep core wounds so that they can heal and see the light within themselves. And I also want to thank you from my heart for this really special and very enlightening interview for grief thank and you. rebirth today, Roland. Thank you so much. And here is a loving reminder, everyone, that you can see the show notes and all grief and rebirth podcast episodes on IreneWeinberg.com and make sure to follow us and like us on social at, at Irene S. Weinberg on Instagram, Facebook, and wherever you get your podcasts, including YouTube. And while you're here, for those of you who are listening, you can find my two books linked in the show notes. And for those who are watching on YouTube, you can check my two books listed above. As I like to say, to be continued. Heartfelt thanks to you, Roland. Many Thank you, blessings. Irene. Thank you. Thank you.